and with the infinite power of the universe. The divine flows through me and everyone. We are divine. We are one with the universal force of all. We are one with this power of wholeness, love, joy, and abundance. We are one with the power of light, the force of truth. And I claim we have within ourselves everything we ever need. I claim we live in a world full of peace where there is respect and equality for all. The politicians of the world lead with heart and intelligence and always have the highest and best for all people. I claim world health where any diseases are returned to the nothingness from whence it came. I claim people working together to reclaim the economy and lives and families coming together in a new and better reality. I know our group knows exactly what to do and we thrive in our new affiliation. I claim our lives are working for us and all is well. And I give thanks for the ever expanding awareness of oneness. I live in gratitude for a world full of peace health, safety, prosperity, and joy. And our group is thankful for our constant guidance and support. And I release this prayer into the law of mind, resting in the insurance that spirit has already made it so. And so we say, and so it is. So it is. And our identity prayer, <clears throat> I know that within myself, there is a life that is perfect and divine. It was, it was never born and it and cannot God. die, for it lives and is God. Within, within myself, myself is hope, peace, peace, poise, and, and the power of life. This life is health, it is abundance, and it is love. There is one life, and it is the life of God, and this is my life now, and so it is. Okay, we have a meditation um, today. It's a little longer than usual, but it's really good, and I think it really... Kathy, are we going to do the song, opening song? Oh, sorry, forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm sorry. When that, yeah. Okay, let's do the song. Let's do the song. Um, you want me to play it, Jane? Sure. Oh. We have come together. Gathered 
that song. Thank you, Jane, for reminding me. Um, okay, this is good. Now we're going to go into the meditation. Welcome to our meditation practice. Today's intention for our time together is to help the mind find peace and balance, especially to help ourselves cope with the uncertainty of our world at this time. Let us begin today by finding a comfortable seated position. You can sit on your bed, against the wall, or on a comfortable cushion if you have one. Let's begin by closing our eyes and taking both our hands and placing them upon our heart. Take a deep breath in and listen to your own heart beating in your chest. With each beat, may it remind you of this beautiful energy, life, prana, that is within you. With each beat, may it take you deeper within at this time, into the internal experience of your own being. Take a deep breath in through your nose, and a long exhalation out, allowing yourself to find this presence, comfort, and grounding within you. Slowly release your hands onto your lap. And let's take the chin hand mudra, where we place the thumb and index finger together, allowing the palm of the hand to face upward creating a seal of energy within your body. Close your eyes and allow yourself to go even deeper, focusing your awareness to the space between your eyebrows, your third eye. Simply focus and notice if you begin to see any shapes or colors or perhaps just complete emptiness and blackness. No judgment here, just simply observe. Breathe in and let it go. Allow your body to let go of any tension in your face. Relaxing your forehead, allowing your eyes to feel heavy, unclenching your jaw, complete relaxation of the face. And then move this relaxation downward towards your shoulders, your arms, and then down towards your hips and your legs. Just let it go. Simply stay present, noticing the movement of your breath as you breathe in and out. Begin to notice any sensations in your body, feeling the coolness of the air coming into your nostrils as you breathe in, and then the warmth of the air leaving your nostrils as you breathe out. Notice if you begin to feel any tingling sensations in your fingers or your toes. Whatever you are experiencing right now, just simply Notice it. Be the watcher of the experience itself. 
Allow yourself to find peace and joy in this simple moment of silence and disconnection. You deserve it. This is a time where it's very normal for our minds to begin to want to cling to something, a specific thought, a memory, a daydream, or perhaps even fear of the future. It will go in many directions and that's okay. Simply remember to use your breath whenever you feel yourself drifting away from this present moment. Use your breath to come back to yourself, to this moment right here, right now, wherever you are. Take a deep breath in and a long and soft exhale out. Breathe in. Exhale out. In this moment, it's okay to realize that you may be feeling uncertainty, stress, or anxiety in your life. But remember, it is simply a reaction to the circumstances around you, which is creating a future that has not happened yet and won't necessarily happen either. Even though we may not be able to control what life brings our way at this time, but what we do have control over is how we react to the challenges or any situations that are brought forward to us. So breathe in, and in this moment, choose to let all that negative energy go. Release it out of you, into the ground, into the earth. Choose to find peace and joy in the simplicity of this very moment. Simply being here with yourself, giving yourself permission to feel to be, to let go. Breathe in and exhale out. As you begin to take your deep breaths, I want you to see and visualize a beautiful radiant white light around you. It can be crystal white or with a tint of any color that comes to you. See this beautiful light of love entering your body with each breath. Welcome this light through the crown of your head and downward into every fiber and cell of your body. Visualize this radiant light healing your body in all the ways that you need healing at this moment, making you stronger, grounded, and healthy. With your exhalation, begin to visualize this darker gray murky color leaving your body. So inhale beautiful radiant white light and exhale dark gray energy out of your body. Create this beautiful intention to let go of all that no longer serves you. Any emotions, unnecessary thoughts, exhale them out of your body, your mind, and your inner being. Inhale radiant light. Exhale all the weight off your shoulders. Inhale. Exhale. Now as we continue to go deeper and dive further into our inner exploration, let's come back to that third eye chakra or the center between your two eyebrows. Notice how you feel right now. Don't let your mind win. The ego may get in the way, making you doubt yourself, or making you want to stop, but simply pay no attention to that energy. Notice it, be aware of it, and then take a breath and confirm to yourself that you are in control of your peace 
of your happiness and your well-being. Take another deep breath in and exhale as you let it go. As you're allowing yourself to go deeper, let's introduce a beautiful and powerful mantra that you can repeat or come back to any time the mind or ego begins to get in the way. Repeating this mantra as many times as you need and truly saying it with conviction and love to yourself. As I surrender to the uncertainty, I am in control, I am safe, and I am guided. As I surrender to the uncertainty, I am in control, I am safe, and I am guided. I am in control, I am safe, and I am guided. I am in control, I am safe, and I am guided. Stay in this moment of stillness and peace as you repeat this mantra as many times as you need. It's time to release your mantra. Slowly begin to bring awareness to your breath, inhaling and exhaling, feeling any energy within your body, perhaps any tingling or temperature sensations in your fingers, arms, feet, or toes. Feel your heart beating. Connect to that rhythm within you. In this moment, 
let's take this opportunity to send out gratitude for all that we have right now for your body for your strength and for the opportunity to be able to reconnect with yourself take another deep breath in and let it go as you move forward with your day remember that no matter what emotions are triggered by external circumstances you are in control of how you react to them do not let yourself be consumed by any fears or negativity let yourself always come back to the idea that you can choose to find joy and happiness no matter what life throws at you finding joy in the simplicity of life and being grateful for all that you do have right now in this moment always coming back to the idea that you are in control of your state of mind you are safe and that you are guided by whatever energy or force that leads you upon this path in life may you be healthy may you find peace within and may you be guided by love thank you so much for spending this moment with me in our meditation together I send you my love and all my good energy to you. Be strong, be healthy, be powerful. Namaste. We are peace and we are holy. We are one in spirit now sing it with me we are peace we are one in spirit now <clears throat> we are peace and we are holy we are one in spirit now thank you jane i have to share this with you um when i was doing the meditation i had a good friend um pass away last year And I saw her pouring this light on me. And I also saw Michelle. Jane knows, it, my friend was Lisser. She was a minister and she was a very powerful lady. And she wanted me to pour this over Michelle. Just wanted to share that with you. Okay. Well. Um, <laughs> okay, Reverend Faith, take it away, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Kathy, my heart goes out to you as we have those experiences and they're so poignant and, and wonderful and alive in us. And it just reminded me um, how unseparate we really are. Mm -hmm. Even though we're, we are encased in this body thing, um, we're not bound by by it we are so much bigger than it and there are messages that we get from those who are still here with us wanting us to soar and wanting us to be more and so those messages are powerful and wonderful and thank you for sharing and reminding me of that because we are better together we are better together 
So I'm really happy to be with you here today. Um, and I'm wondering if we can stop the screen share so I can see a gallery view of people because I really want to see you. Um, it's really nice to see old friends. Thank you, Paul. It's really nice to see old friends and faces that I haven't seen before and new hairdos and smiles and, and, um, Violet, yeah. Come on. Yeah, Violet's on. Yeah. So I'm just, um, it, it's nice to reconnect. And you're always in my heart because I think of you guys often. And Kathy and I do speak on occasion about what's happening here. And um, I am the regional support coordinator for the region. So that makes it um, important that I do talk with her and know about what is happening in your group. So I'm constantly holding you in prayer as well. Um, I know my first question was going to be, are you aware that there's an energy, a creative force in this world that is here for us. And because the service has already pointed us in that direction, I know the answer to that, that each one of you is aware of that. And we're here to celebrate that spirit together. Now, the topic is better together. And so I'm just going to take a wild guess and go out on a limb here for a minute that says, um, we haven't all arrived here on our own. I'm guessing that your mom, like my mom, might have helped you tie your shoelaces and taught you how to do that. Um, my dad encouraged me to be more, to change a bit. Um, and I may have told you that story sometime, but that's for another time. I learned to climb a tree by watching my brothers climb trees. And I learned so much from people that I don't even know. I'm encouraged by people I don't even know. Those people who hold open doors for you, those people who help you um, get something off the top shelf of a store, that I'll never know their names and I may never see them again. But their generosity of spirit and their willingness to be part of of something bigger, their willingness to share is so important. So it's finding community in life with those we know and with those that we may never see again, but understanding that their importance to us. So I've learned about spirit by giving up religion and finding a community that supports the delving into something bigger than I am by inviting us to go deeper and stronger. And it has been said, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And that's why we are in communities. We're in communities to go far, to go deep, to go wide, and to go high. And we do that by bouncing ideas off one another, by supporting one another and loving one another. It truly does continue to take a village to raise me. Still, at my age, I need a village. I need a village to be supportive and loving and caring and encouraging. And I think that's why we have communities such as Science of Mind Charlottesville. This is a wonderful place that has come together for the second time. And how grateful I am that Carolyn started it and carried it long enough so that the energy remained here. So that when Kathy came here, it was ready to bloom and blossom again. Because it's not yay about... For Kathy. Pardon? I said, yay for Kathy. <laughs> yay for Kathy. Yay for Carolyn. <laughs> yay for Carolyn. <laughs> Because, and yay for Tom who shows up for both of those groups, and yay for the new ones who are coming in, and yay for Michelle for supporting from afar and being that light that she is, and Jane with her music, and Violet with her grace and beauty, and Paul with his technology and books and understandings, and Bob with his sharing, and Lynn with her crafts, and, and Betty, I don't know you well enough to know exactly, but I know that you just being here makes a difference and people are excited when you come on the line 
So it's all together. And Anne, who's there supporting Paul and, and herself and doing her work in the world so beautifully. So some of you I clearly know better than others, but it is all of us combined that make it work. Um, there's a story that goes around our, I have a practitioner at Celebration Center. I shouldn't say I have a practitioner. We have a practitioner at Celebration Center who was born and raised in Russia. And when she heard this topic, um, she told this story. She said, when I was a little, small child in kindergarten and many, many times throughout school, everywhere, they told this story about an old man who had three sons and the sons did not get along. And this hurt his soul and hurt his heart because he had land and possessions and he didn't know what would happen to them when he died. So you know they couldn't, he knew they couldn't get along and, and they would probably lose everything. So he invited them all over at the same time and he had a broom and he handed each one the broom and said, break this broom. And they were strong, strapping men, but they couldn't break the broom. And it was one of those brooms that's made of branches and intertwined. I hope you're all familiar. I have seen something like that. So the father took the broom and unwound the branches and said, break the broom now. And they could easily break each branch. And so he told them, you see, this is how family is. This is how, how we work together. This is how the world is. We are stronger and better together. Nothing can break us if we stay together. And those little branches represent each one of us, and the broom represents the community, the family, the world. So we are stronger together too. We are stronger together. Our science of mind, philosophy, and inclusion says, if our human relations are to mean the most to us, we must sense that there is hidden inside of us, within, around, and through each of us, a divine presence manifesting itself in infinite variations. It is the same impulse, the same love, the same life, but showing up never quite alike in two persons. And sometimes that can drive us crazy, can't it? Because I want you to be like me. I want you to line up. I had a friend once who said, if I know that if everyone lined up and followed me, we'd have a great world. <laughs> And she said that tongue in cheek, you know, that if everyone was in agreement, and yet how boring would that be? What would we see if we only saw one person's view? It would be so narrow and so constricted that we would be bored. I would be bored. Um, I shouldn't put words in your mouth. I would be bored. So another thing... Um, from the Principle of Oneness book by Russell Anthony Gibbs says, choose to love every facet of yourself unconditionally. Choose to love every facet unconditionally. You are a complex multidimensional being and loving yourself requires identify and accepting and loving all of our separate parts. That idea of loving ourselves so much reminded me of a song, you know, that song that says, I love myself so much that I can love you so much that you can love you so much so you can start loving me. It's very circular <laughs> and I have to get, work hard to get it right. But the idea is it really does begin with our own self-love here. Because if we can't love ourselves enough, we don't have enough to give to the world. We have so much more that we can give from a loving place where people can hear us and see us and feel us and know us than we do from a place that is constricted 
by self-doubt or self-worth, unworthiness. There is um, a, a botanist named Robin Wall Kimmer who grew up in a forest. She spent her childhood near a forest and loved the forest and the plants and the trees. And she noticed that there were certain plants that seemed to grow together. There were asters and goldenrod that grew, seemed to grow in the same communities in different spots. And she loved those flowers because they were beautiful with the golden, um, um, asters which ones which ones are which wait a minute the golden asters the deep purple um of the asters and the golden rod the yeah. that golden color and they're opposites on the color wheel and she was wondering how they happen to grow together so beautifully and why and it caused her to want to go to school to find out but when she told the school the botany school I want to I want to find out why these two plants live together. They're so beautiful. She was told that if she wanted to explore beauty, she should go to art school <laughs> and not go to botany school. So um, she did want to learn about plants and she began to understand that science was not going to line up with her. But eventually there was a knowing that came from her study. She studied botany and found out that their intermingling not only held the aesthetic beauty for, for eyesight and, and wowness factors, but it also created a way of drawing the pollinators to the area because separately they were not drawing as many pollinators as they needed, but when they grew together, and there was this brilliant contrast that the pollinators would come all the time. So, so she knew that it's a, there's a question here in her mind about embracing the world and the beauty of the world and why it is so beautiful. And we can find that out by studying what plants do, what animals do and what we do. Because in her studies, in her scientific studies, she said, I never, it was never, ever finding out that plants were dumb or stupid. It was finding out that plants are smart and brilliant and can learn and have memories and know to grow together. So it's really understanding the sentience of all beings. And we're beginning, I, I feel like we're on the touchstone edge of this, and yet so much of work has been done, this sentience. Because I believe, I firmly believe that one day we will understand that rocks actually have feelings and can move and do their work in the world, just like everything else. Because how can we say there's one presence, one God, one creator? and claim that, oh, we're the only ones who are smart and brilliant. You know, we're stronger together. When geese fly in formation, they can, they can go 40% further than going alone. Animals travel in packs for safety and well-being and to learn from one another. We are not the only creatures who learn and remember. If you've ever had a pet, and you've even a goldfish, a simple little goldfish knows that when you hold your finger over there with food, it comes to the top really quickly. They understand. When you train a dog or an animal or the animal gets used to your routine, they know. They are not clueless. They're brilliant, just like we are. They are so brilliant. Now, part of this this month's theme is also about inclusion, including one another. And you know, when, when uh, that Niagara Falls suspension bridge was born, I don't know how many of you have heard this story, 
that Charles Allen began brainstorming sessions with his group. And, and they raised several ideas that would come, that could be viable in their own right. You know, they included cannonballs being shot across the line. Um, they included a rocket going across somehow, tying something to a steamboat and sending it across. But ultimately, there's a bridge engineer who remains nameless, interestingly enough, who brought up the idea about flying a kite based on Benjamin Franklin's experiences and experiments. And Charles Ellett liked that idea and began to promote it and to uh, go out to the communities and promote this idea. And he offered $5 to the, to the young boy who could fly a kite and tie the string, ground the string over, over the Niagara Falls. Many, many young men came out to try this, but one young man went over to the Canadian side of the border to fly his kite, instead of staying on the US side. And from that, his kite almost got to the other side, but it fell a few yards short. He recouped for a few days and went back and tried again and was successful. And he tied, he had the string tied from both sides. So the engineer who thought of this idea remains nameless. What I'm going to encourage you to do is to know that the ideas that you put out there could be so valuable that someone will pick them up and run with them. And we may never get credit. And that's okay. I learned that working uh, with a company under the guidance of, of um, a woman who was my boss, who was, who was brilliant in her own right. And I learned that when I went into her office and said, I, I have this idea. And she would go, no. <laughs> and I would go, okay. You know, and the first few times I did that, I was like, I was like, gosh, I thought it was a brilliant idea. I thought it would work. Um, and then a few weeks later, you know, that idea surfaced again. And we began using it. And so I soon learned that when I went into her office and said, you know, I have this idea. And I heard no, that sooner or later, it might come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And it was okay with me that I didn't get credit because all I wanted was an easier way to work together, an easier way for the system to work. And so sometimes putting ourselves aside and leaving our ego at the door is what's important to move this forward. To move this forward. I, in this study, in this monthly theme of Better Together, I searched a lot about, because our monthly theme also includes inclusivity. So, so many of us um, are tired of hearing about diversity and inclusivity, and I hope none of you really are. Although sometimes we get weary of hearing the same thing, it's such an important topic. And this COVID-19, I want to hear how you all are in our conversation time, uh, has taken its toll on many of us, but it's also opened doors for people who now have time to really contemplate some ideas of diversity and inclusion. And it's bringing this forward and we're here. And so we can see it and grab hold of the ideas that are coming forth in ways that we wouldn't have been able to had we been so very busy because our lives are very important and very busy. And so to have this time of a bit of respite, even though I feel that, feel, um, busier than ever sometimes it's a different kind of busy isn't it it's a different kind of busy and we are able to focus on different kinds of things so i've been delving 
heavily into diversity, the systems of our, our country, uh, what might we do to have some of that shift and change into more equality. Um, I love the prayers that were spoken today, inviting everyone to, to have equality and freedom and the rights that we that some of us have taken for granted, that I have taken for granted, because I am just becoming aware. I feel sad saying that, but it's true. So I did some um, searching on the internet and I found uh, Dr. Sharif Abdullah, who I've heard of before and read a little bit about and such, but I invite you to um, explore him, Dr. Sharif Abdullah. He started a group called Common Way, and he's about societal transformation. So I'm going to read you um, abbreviated some, one of his posts, one of his uh, little vignettes and, that he has. He wants to create a world that works for all living things. How familiar does that sound? Mm -hmm. I'm finding more and more groups and more and more books that say exactly creating a world that works for everyone mm -hmm. in so many different ways. So it's, it's gaining ground like that hundredth monkey syndrome. You're how many are familiar with the hundredth monkey? I've heard it. I forgot it now. <laughs> okay. The hundredth monkey, one monkey took his, his food down, began to take his food down to the water to wash it off before he ate it. And another monkey saw him and decided to try that. And so the monkeys on that island became, became um, it became a tradition for them to go down to the water to wash their food. And when the hundredth monkey on that island did that, monkeys all over the world started washing their food, even though they were separate, you know, on separate, continents and islands. So there is a theory about the energy that builds as we build our consciousness. And, and um, I'm believing the more I hear, because at first I'm going like, oh, they're stealing our logo, creating a world. Or they're taking that away from us. Well, how <laughs> silly is that? How first grader is that? You know, because we want everyone to be creating a world that works for everyone. And so as I see books come out now, I say, yes, yes. As I hear someone say that, I say, yes. Because the more it's implanted in more minds, the more it will grow, the more um, it will grow exponentially. So back to Dr. Sharif Abdullah. He says, the word that I use an awful lot in my books is inclusivity. And by inclusivity, I mean something very specific. And that is the idea that all of our lives are inex inextricably linked to each other. My life is linked to your life, whether I know you or not. My life is linked to your life, whether I like you or not. I'm not trying to get us to get to a state where we all like each other. I'm trying to get us to a state where we all recognize that we are linked together to one another. Because once you recognize that you are linked to me, once you recognize it, that I'm linked to you and you are linked to me, we will treat each other differently. As long as you hold the energy of exclusivity, of separateness, that I am separate from you, you will treat me a different way. Whether you can like me in most, um, whether you can like me, like most folks, like their slaves, a hundred years ago, when old Sally died, they cried but they still saw themselves as separate from old Sally. And that separation leads to every ism that we have right now. Mm -hmm. That separation that I am separate, exclusive energy, exclusivist energy, gives us racism and sexism and homophobia and you name it, whatever it is, 
it's rooted in exclusivity, separateness. As I recognize that my life is linked to your life, I will treat you differently. A story that I heard that occurred during World War II that's always stuck with me is that in France, when the Germans were rounding up the Jewish communities, they put them in concentration camps. Um, there were people who at great risk to their own lives would harbor the Jewish families in their barns. It was a great risk and sometimes they did this for years. <clears throat> In order to do this, you have to sneak food to your barn. And you have to make sure that no one else is watching. And when people are coming, going, and things like that, you put yourself at risk. Now, the neat thing about this was that those people that put their lives in danger at risk didn't necessarily like Jews. So they didn't do this because they liked Jews. They didn't do this because they liked them. They did this because they recognized their lives were linked. And if we can do that, we can recognize that our lives are linked to each other. When we start doing something, that's when, that's when we start doing something on a very different level a very different level. When I realized things that had happened in this country, the Jewish concentration camps in World War II that we had, well, I don't know if they were concentration camps, they were camps. We rounded people up and took them away from their families and put them in a different place. We did that to the Indians. We've done so much. And I have a a daughter-in-law who's from the Philippines. If someone tried to round up all those people, I would be horrified because mm -hmm. I'm linked to her. I'm linked to her. So now I am choosing to broaden my idea of who I am linked to. I'm not just linked to you, to you, Ann and Paul, to you, Kathy. I'm not just linked to you, Tom and Carolyn and Michelle. And I'm not just linked to Jane or Bob or Violet or Betty or Lynn. I am linked also to those trees and plants and grass and animals and all of the creation. But my most important job as a community for us to soar together is to remember that I'm linked to you. Because then I will treat you differently. Hafiz says it really well in his poem. And it comes from uh, the, the book, The Gift by Hafiz, which has become one of my favorites. If God invited you to a party and said, <laughs> Everyone in the ballroom tonight will be my special guest. How would you treat them when you arrived? Indeed, indeed. And Hafiz knows that there is no one in the world who is not upon God's jeweled dance floor. No one. If we can remember we're linked, if we can remember that there's no one on the dance floor but God's creation, how will we treat each other? How will we be inclusive? I think sometimes when we talk about unconditional love, we have this, this big idea that we have to like each other and that we have to you know, it means that we have to really like you. And Sharif Abdullah just shifted my mind there. I don't have to like you, but I do have to recognize you and treat you as though you are part of me because you are. So I'm just going to take a breath there. And I think that I have said most everything that I need to say here. Um, 
inclusion is the basis of all there is. That's our science of mind point of view. There is but one God, one mind, one spirit, one soul. And evolution is inclusive. Evolution is inclusive. There is a world wide web now. We're on it. The trees have a wood wide web. That floral <laughs> ground <laughs> under them. They treat they feed each other. They feed one another. The root system supports the little saplings that don't get light because of the shade they're in. It supports with nutrients, things that aren't getting oxygen or carbon dioxide to give out. There, it, it, it is so amazing. If you begin studying any concept of nature, plants, floral, animal, you're gonna see the connection so deeply. And, and we can deepen our connections by knowing the truth of who we are. So let's just take a breath and, and go into prayer. I am so grateful for this time together. I am so grateful for all that has come before this prayer. The sharing and the beginning, the prayers, the knowings, the understandings that have been shared the willingness to help one another. I'm grateful for the meditation, the music, the gift of laughter that we've had together. There's been moments and there's more to come. So knowing there is one mind, one presence, one power, one good in this universe, knowing that it is the common link between each and every one of us. So how can we not be linked together? You and I are in this wonderful, wonderful human life form on this beautiful planet Earth, ready to do our work and ready to deepen understanding that is why we come together in community, the beloved community, to go together, to go further together, to understand, to learn, to grow, to assist each other when we need it, to pray with each other. And so how grateful I am again still for this knowing and understanding that we call science of mind that we call new thought, whatever name we call it, just like whatever name we call God is good. I am grateful that we have time to share after this so that we can talk about what our desires, our dreams, our wants, our needs, whatever is in our heart today, whatever speaks to us. And I appreciate all of those who made this group possible, which is each of you and those who are not here that come regularly, those who are yet to be here. So I'm opening this inclusivity to newness, to welcoming, and to furthering this philosophy. So with that, I just put these words into a law that is unfailing, that knows what is in my heart and knows what is in the hearts of each of you and knows that this prayer garners power by our sharing it together as we release it to the universe to do its work. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Faith. So <clears throat> Reverend Faith, uh, thank you so much. And we have another song right now. And um, I introduced this song for the first time during our last service, but it just, uh, I just had a feeling that it would be really appropriate again. And so um, um, we can all sing together, Paul. You want me to play it, Jane? Play it, Jane. Yes, please. 
yourself yep <laughs> I, it was perfect yeah it was perfect 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 yeah can we see everything again paul uh, i'm gonna yeah i don't know if i can figure out how to do it Let's see here. 